so Debo Samuel, he's he's in the news. <laughs> he's making it about him. It used to be all about him until they traded for Christian McCaffrey. Then it became all about Christian McCaffrey. There was a stretch last year. You may not even remember it, but Debo Samuel hurt his knee toward the end of the season. Missed like three or four games in a row. Do you remember that? Yeah, no, sort of. No, you do? Sort of. Sort of. It's kind of hard to remember because the offense didn't change. Uh, they kept scoring lots of points. It's like it, it didn't matter. He came back. They were still good. Um, I just think it's interesting that all of a sudden, this Niners offense that's so talented and whatever is all about Christian McCaffrey now. Without him last year, people forget they were scoring 19 points per game with all those guys, Debo, Kittle, Ayuk. Um, he came, McCaffrey, and everything opened up. So they're in a position where their highly, their high-powered offense kind of all depends on the health and durability of a 200-pound running back that they're going to use too much. You hope they don't use them too much, but they probably will. Yeah, that's what they do. Because, yes. you know, they have a tough time keeping quarterbacks healthy. Same with running backs. So, Iggy, your point is that used to be Debo was the center, but now that center didn't hold. That's Yates, by the way. That center and, didn't and hold. That's, yeah, that's Yates. And, and, and now it's McCaffrey. The way I look at it is the catalyst of this offense is never the quarterback. It's the running back. And that's the yeah. way the Shanahan's are. It's kind of their, the flaw of their whole system because it's they're a running back-based system. When they had Terrell Davis, they won the Super Bowl. Christian McCaffrey's great. Um, so he's the catalyst now. And when it was Debo two years ago, he was the catalyst. It's not Debo anymore. He's not as good of a running back as Christian McCaffrey. So no. they need Debo to like go play wide receiver. And he's not even as good of a wide receiver as Brandon Ayuk. So now all of a sudden you got this guy making $25 million a year and you don't even know what the role is for him. I love it. But let, let's come back to McCaffrey, McCaffrey for a minute. Yeah. Iggy, there are certain players that, that I think about that are a pleasure to watch. Um, Russell Wilson, when he was younger, I used to love to watch him play because I knew when the play ended, the play didn't end, that he yeah. was so creative and a winner. I feel that way about McCaffrey. I, every time he gets the ball, it's electric because he's so clever at avoiding contact, avoiding tackles. And he's a terrific wide receiver. I have the same feeling of joy watching him that I used to have with Russell. Sure. Do you? One, do you? I, I do. Let me explain what I like about Christian McCaffrey. And I, I'm going to contrast him to Debo because Debo has the same uh, ability. Like when he gets the ball in his hands, he can break four tackles in one play. He's a lot of fun. I was sitting next to Tom Rathman one time. And whenever Debo got the ball, Tom Rathman was like, oh, my God, he's Hercules out there. Like that's Tom freaking Rathman saying that. So he's, Debo has that effect. It's cool. Debo has an effect uh, on the greatest in the game to make them drop your dr their jaw. Same with McCaffrey. But with McCaffrey, he has that Jerry Rice level <clears throat> professionalism. He's always in midseason shape. He's in every freaking drill. He doesn't take any time off. Like he's ready to go. And I, I use like that. And I respect athletes like that because there's a lot of gifted athletes. There's very few at gifted athletes who also have that mindset. Rice has it, had it, still has it. McCaffrey still has, has it. it. Ayuk has it. Debo doesn't. And it kind of bugs me. If he did have it, he'd be a Hall of Famer. But that's not necessarily who he's been so far. But we're not talking I about agree. him. McCaffrey has it. And I really admire watching that dude do a practice in mid-May. Like it's freaking November. It's cool to watch. And what? here's the other thing. You admire it, watching it. So do the players. That's leadership. It's not, it's not like they're not looking. No. Iggy. It's leadership. It's leadership on the field. It's it's this guy who says, I have a level of achievement and a level of practice, and I'm showing it and demonstrating my character to you. Can you live up to this? As Debo opposed won't. to Debo, as opposed to Debo, you know, I'm not going to practice today. I'm not in the mood. I, I, I have a my toenail hurts. Yeah, I've proven enough already. I, I, I'm a great player. I don't need to go out and set the tone in a practice in May. Ayuk does. McCaffrey does. Set the standard, not the standard. tone. The standard. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's the word. It's the standard. And yep. CMC has the standard. And apparently, this other guy who hung up, <laughs> he hung up on the standard. Yeah, watching McCaffrey practice and just do his job on a day-to-day -day basis, it's like, I mean, I don't know if he'll make the Hall of Fame, but it's like I'm watching a Hall of Famer. That's what a Hall of Famer does. That's how a yeah. Hall of Famer carries himself. Um, 
And so if the Niners can keep him healthy, they have a Hall of Famer type at running back. And when the Shanahan's have one of those, they have a shot. You know, they have a shot. But I don't know if they can keep this guy healthy. That's going to be kind of the story this year. We're all talking about the quarterback. Can they keep Christian McCaffrey healthy? Because without him last year, they scored 19 points. 19! Not even 20! That's crazy. And after they got him, what they score? Like 30-plus. 30 30-plus. 30 He's that important. He's that important. And uh, Iggy, okay, now hold on a minute. We're in no hurry. Um, I'm not in a hurry. Can you imagine McCaffrey hanging up the phone? No, it would never happen. Neither would Ayuk. Neither would Kittle. Neither would Trent Williams. Neither would Fred Warner. Neither would Nick Bosa. Ne no one would do that. It's not a good look. It just makes you look like you lost your cool and the other person got under your skin. Laugh it off. Or say like, you know, I don't want to talk about it now. We'll, we'll let our play do the talking when we play him. Less this year. There's so many things you could say other than I'm out. You agree to the interview. You didn't have to do it. Or another thing about Debo we didn't talk about, like he never talks to the local media. If you did an interview with like Cam or Matt or Matt or Jen or Eric or Nick or me, like I probably wouldn't have got that question. But you wanted the national attention, didn't you? Well, those are the questions you're going to get. You're going to get, you're not going to get the like, so would you do this off season? Hey, like, how, <laughs> how, you know, how's the wide receiver well, yeah. room looking? Like, no, you'll get that from NBC Sports Bay Area. You went to CBS Sports. What do you think they're going to ask you, dog? And you can tell them not to ask you it, too. I, you just didn't think it through, Debo. But we're not talking about him right now. We're talking about Christian McCaffrey. I want to also say, and, and this is uh, chauvinistic on my part, I, I sort of like Stanford athletes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Stanford football players I have known. Jim Plunkett. Mm -hmm. John Elway. John Lynch. John Lynch. John Lynch. Luck. Yeah. CM CMC. C These are... I'm sorry. Sorry, I just said CMC. CMC. These are, are not only bright, interesting people. They really have a work ethic. They understand what it takes. And in the case of Luck, he understood he didn't have it anymore. And he walked away. Boy, yeah. do I admire that. Yeah. This was a hell of a quarterback. So I'm very partial to, you know, I was not an undergraduate at Stanford. I, I, I went to Lafayette College, but... I spent six years at Stanford, you know, doing my degrees. And I also taught freshman English there for years. So um, I have a, a, a very, a, it was a big, important part of my life. And I'm very proud of Stanford athletes. And I'm proud of Christian McCaffrey uh, as the latest example of what, of what Stanford produces. You know, it's funny because I'm the same way with UCLA athletes. Neither of us are really big into college sports. Like, you don't watch no. Stanford football and root. I don't really watch UCLA no. football and root. But when there's a UCLA football player on the Niners, I always go up to him and be like, hey, I went to UCLA. Like, what, what dorm are you in? <laughs> and there's one guy on the team right now. His name is Quantrez Knight. He's on the practice squad. And we, like, always say hello to each other. In the When he sees me, he goes, and I'm like, hey, we give each other a little fist bump. <laughs> really cool guy. Just because he went to UCLA. And the funny thing, right. I don't know if I've told you this before. He played for Chip Kelly at UCLA. He's been on the team for a couple of years. So I went to him in the locker room last year. And I was like, I call, we, I call him Q. His name is Quantrez. I call him Q. That's what people call him. His friends call him Q. So I said, Q, do you know who the coach of this team, the 49ers, was before Kyle Shanahan? And he looked at me and he goes, no, no idea. I said, Chip Kelly. I said, get the hell out of here. He had no idea. Isn't that funny? Oh, wow. Well, you know what? I think um, c players have no interest in history, even if it's, if it's two years before. It's amazing. It's All they think amazing. about is the present moment. Of course. Like, he probably grew up in Florida or something. You know, he heard of Chip Kelly when he went to school with them and had no idea what the hell Chip Kelly was doing before then. He was coaching Iggy, the 49ers. Iggy, he may not have heard of Bill Walsh. I'm sure he hasn't. I'm sure he hasn't. I know it's crazy, right? right. Getting old. Yeah. Will. Willard Culver says, Grant, don't take a week off again. My week was too boring. All right, I won't. I'm done for the year. I'm back. I'm back. Kid Got Game 45 says, planning on going to my first NFL game this year to see the Niners. Probably going to be the Washington game. Any recommendations for where to sit? Where to sit? Yeah, the press box for free. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't not in the games. sun. Not in yeah. the sun. Not yeah. on the east side. No, no, no. I, I think that's going to be on the road. Um, am I wrong? Oh. I don't know. Ivan says, need more players like 80 and less like 19. Yeah. I just always thought Jerry Rice was the standard. I don't understand people not practicing. Like, if Jerry would, why wouldn't you? Don't you want to be the greatest of all time? Don't you want to be the greatest of all time? McCaffrey does, it seems. 
I don't know. Timothy Glander says Niners interview uh, like the coach does blame him. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Absol First of all, Kyle Shanahan never would have hung up the phone. No, absolutely not. Never would have hung up the phone. Plus, Debo Samuel is a grown-up. He has an agent. He has people who advise him. He's responsible for his own actions. He's a father. I mean, he's, a, he's he should be mature. Mui says, uh, Mui says, it just makes it seem like you can't hang. A young person's recourse, it's not that you won't deal with it. It's that you can't. A young person's recourse. Yeah, just like, I'm going home. Like I got, you know, pick, t taking my stuff and going home. Yeah. It feels like there are stronger plays. Stronger moves. Sleepy one fourteen fourteen says Debo gave up an up close gave us an up close and personal look at his attitude and behavior during the contract. Props to Lynch and those involved dealing with him. I agree. Yeah, yeah it must have been tough. Austin Rodriguez says going back to Debo from a non media standpoint, what he did was fine. The reporter asked him the two most repetitive questions they've been answering every day, and he got fed up. He got his bread. Get out. I totally disagree with this comment. Uh, Anoop says 2023, 2024 Niners are Super Bowl win or bust. Debo, Eric, Trent, Juice, Kittle, Kyle, and John could all be out if we don't win. Heat is on. QC, bring it. Um, did he mention uh, any quarterbacks in there in that list? They don't need quarterbacks. They have a room, a room full of them, overflowing with quarterbacks. Last Second yeah. Sports says this was a sponsor interview, meaning they didn't request Debo. The sponsor requested them. Give the Marshawn answer over hanging up. This was a sponsor interview, meaning they didn't request Debo. The sponsor requested them. I don't know what that means. I know what that means because I know I had done a million of these. They call you up and they say, we're going to give you Debo. Yeah. We'd like you to pl – uh, the, the quid pro quo is you, you plug his deal and yeah. he'll answer questions. That's how it yeah. works. Yeah, I've done them before. I don't understand. Okay, moving on. Uh, Aggie, I want to say one other thing. Please do. Uh, um, we We – we got off on a little um, sidetrack about um, McCaffrey. I think we need to emphasize the point. He is so important to the team that Kyle Shanahan used, needs to use him judiciously. Thank he you. can't, yes. he cannot get this guy hurt. So the issue of CMC is Kyle Shanahan. Agree. Right. Okay. To me, because McCaffrey is the offense. Like Debo, yeah. you don't know what you're going to get from him. Ayuk's great, but they don't really have the quarterback to get him the ball where he wins down the field. Right. Kittle's great, but not every game. I mean, he's getting older and he kind of like has to conserve himself and do it like once a month. It's McCaffrey. As soon as they got him on the team, they were giving him the, they couldn't stop giving him the ball. Um, and it worked, but, you know, how much longer can they do that? Like, it's kind of scary to think that your whole offense depends on a 200 pound running back. A little scary. And and that means that the coach has to be very shrewd. He has to know what he's doing. If you have a big lead in the fourth quarter, take him out. Thank you. Take him out. Yeah. Right? And there has to be another back who's right. going to get maybe 35 or 40% of the carries. Don't okay. you think, Iggy? Absolutely. Because with McCaffrey, I mean, not in the playoffs. In, in the playoffs, you want McCaffrey taking it all. But you yeah. need to get him there in one piece full strength and it's 17 games so the Niners have Elijah Mitchell on the team still they have Jordan Mason last year who averaged six yards a carry but didn't play that much freaking use him and you have Debo still too he can give you a couple carries if he doesn't hang up the phone Woo. I'd set you up with hey, Iggy okay. I, am I down on him today yeah I, I haven't been this offended by uh, a player's um behavior in a long time and the thing about it is it's not that I'm intellectually offended. I can feel burning in my chest. That's how love, angry it makes I me. I love how um, fiercely defensive – not defend how, how fiercely you defend journalists and journalism. Like, oh, yeah. that's the new standard for an interview where a player can just go on and do that, uh, an interview that he agreed to? No, 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 no. No, that's not it. And we're not going to we're not gonna applaud that either. And that's the thing. Like, I'm sure a few 49er fans will say, you know – Debo was cool. Screw that interviewer. Go Debo. Yeah, I'm sure there's a, there's probably like 5,000 people in the world who feel that way. Everyone else who saw that clip was like, what's that guy mad about? Boy, that yeah. guy just made himself look like a freaking clown. What's that about? So whatever. Iggy, you have 5,000 people you. cheering you on. That's it. Iggy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a lot more famous than Debo Samuel. And in his sport, it, it, Debo will never achieve no. uh, the level. When he was with the Lakers, they used to stay at a hotel near the Coliseum Arena. 
And I arranged with their PR people that before a night game, I could go to Kareem's room and interview him. Now, Kareem has a reputation about being very difficult, but um, he's also very bright. Mm -hmm. So he invited me to his room. This could never happen. UCLA, New York. New York. New Yorker and New Yorker. And And a Bruin. Sorry. And a Bruin. And he could see that I was a New Yorker, that I had done my homework. I had read a whole book we talked about. Iggy, he tried so hard um, in that he was so large. He had to lie on the bed. There was nowhere that he could really sit. We must have talked for an hour until they called and said the bus is leaving. And then he had such a good time. He said, when I meet him at the arena and continue. The point is, this wasn't Joe Schmatz. This was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar working his tish off for some guy he didn't even know. Compare that to what Debo did. Right. And again, if Debo felt like, man, this is low-hanging fruit questions. This is the, the lowest common denominator stuff. Ask me something better. Work that out beforehand. Like, this isn't your first interview. Is it your first interview? You're Debo Sam. You're like 26 years old. You've made like $50 million. You should know how to handle the media like Ayuk does. Freaking Trent Williams does, but you don't. You couldn't even tell him beforehand, like, don't ask me this. It's awkward. I don't want to go there. You could have. And Iggy. And Iggy, he knew that the what he said after the Philly game was no good. And he couldn't defend it. He had a bad conscience about it. That's right. So you said it. He had stand a, on you it. said it. You said, you said it. Or, he, or you could have said, you know, I said it in the heat of the moment. There you go. I had said it in the heat one. of the moment. Yeah. Say that, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That makes you feel like, you're, wow, this guy, you know, he's so mature. Thought yeah. about it. Changed his mind. What? A, I love I, this guy. Hangs yeah. up. Was like, oh, thank you very much. You think that guy's upset that Debo hung up on him? He has the most att- If Debo hadn't hung up. No one would have listened to that interview. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It would have been another, was, another boring bit. athlete interview where the athlete says nothing. He hangs yeah. up. Now we all listen to it and we talk <laughs> yeah. about it. And now we know who that guy is. I've mm. never heard of that guy. Now I do. Yeah. I know. So good job. And I, think he, and I think that guy handled himself. Zach Gelb. Yeah, he didn't lose his sense of humor. No, he was he great. off. Yeah. Thanks, Debo. Yeah. Uh, Grant, Jerry is great. Debo is good. CMC is great. Jordan, great. Kobe, great. No one outworks the greats. If you want to be one of the greats, that's how you act. And it, like the fact that Debo doesn't do it makes me feel like he doesn't necessarily want to be one of the greats. He's good being what he is. Mr. Blue Magic 23 says, just because someone doesn't handle themselves the way that we would doesn't make them wrong. They're humans at the end of the day. They're wrong. I said he's wrong. He's a human being who was wrong. You're allowed. It's not a relative universe. You're allowed to have opinions and you're allowed to say someone acted like a schmuck and he acted like a schmuck. I'd have to say he acted like a schmuck. He could always yeah. repent later and say he was yeah. wrong. Cisco kid. Thank you very much. Cisco kid again. Do you think there's a chance Niners will, you a two, will use a two quarterback system? They tried with Jimmy and Trey before he hurt his thumb. It's true. They did try with Jimmy and Trey. It's possible. I think Kyle Shanahan feel. I think his ego would allow him to do anything. Anything's a good idea if it pops in his head. So maybe. We'll see. Mr. Blue Magic 23 says, we asked them to stop talking about the NFC title game. Now we want them to. He tried to get around the question most than once. Okay, I'll say it again. He acted like a schmuck. Let's move on. All right, he acted like a schmuck. Um, maybe the question wasn't supposed to be asked, and he still did. We're on the outside looking uh, in. Why are all these people defending him? I'll tell you why they're, they're defending fans. him. Because they're not because they're fans. fans. They're fans. So if whatever D-Bow happens. If were on the Seahawks or the Cardinals or the Rams or right. the Titans, they'd be like, look at this guy. What a schmuck, what right? A schmuck. But he's he, yeah. but he's a 49er. So, oh, let's find a reason to defend him. Right. You know what? I, I, I'm it, bored. And the same thing happened last defend. year during, during the, the contract stuff. It's like, okay, like he's acting – really immature and he I just requested a trade and he's re- sitting out uh but no he, this is how athletes act these days like no it's not it's how debo acts so right. nick bosa's going through the same thing right now have you heard anything from has nick bosa requested a trade no he's just shutting the fuck up that's what he's doing <laughs> that's his you strategy know, this offseason i'm gonna shut the fuck up <laughs> it's working uh, it, really well it's amazing how shutting the fuck up works sometimes and shows how grown up you are uh, again, I've never met Bosa, but I bet if if I were covering the team, he's probably the number one guy I'd like to meet. I bet he's fascinating. Of course, he is. He is another. There's very few guys on the team that are actually independent. Uh, with independent 
people who have independent perspectives. Jimmy uh, Ward was one. Bosa is one. Bosa is one. He's basically not on the team. He like there are people who are full time employees of the 49ers. He is not a full time employer. It doesn't matter how much money they give him. He is an independent cr- contractor. He doesn't live out here. He doesn't come to the. Uh, he doesn't practice in the off season. He lives in Florida, and whatever. So like the Niners are cool to be in business with him, but he's essentially not a 49er. He's like an honorary 49er. For now, I love it. I love yeah. it. But he plays his ass off for he the plays 49ers. His ass off. You want him on, you know, in the building. But that's all yeah. he really is. <laughs> so so okay. Well, so what's cool about that is the game ends, they lose, which doesn't happen very often. But if they do lose, who's gonna tell it like it is? Bosa. The coach will come in. Oh, you know, it's not like we, we, their effort wasn't better than us. They didn't. We didn't get out game planned. It was just execution. Bosa would be like, no, it wasn't just execution. They they played harder than us, and we weren't prepared for this. We weren't prepared. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it. Very few players. Joe Joe Staley. He's Joe Staley. Yeah, you have to be great. You have to know that the team essentially needs you. And like Nick knows he's so good that he's like, I don't even have to live out here. Like, I don't even have to come to minicamp. You you will take me however I you can get me, right? I'm the defensive right. player of the year. I like that. 